Hello students and welcome to our instrument flying basics video. Before we jump into the cockpit let's quickly discuss the objective of these maneuvers and some key factors that we'll be focusing on. First, the objective of instrument flying basics is to develop the skills necessary to maintain positive control of the aircraft and to navigate in instrument meteorological conditions or in areas of low visibility. So we're going to demonstrate simple, basic, beginner instrument maneuvers here. In this maneuver execution video, we will not be covering detailed aerodynamics, maneuver diagrams, common student errors, or the ACS standards. This video is to simply explain and demonstrate the execution of the maneuver and will vary based on the aircraft you are flying. To see all of the additional details we just mentioned and to study this lesson's full length presentation, podcast, diagrams, flashcards, lesson quiz, and a whole bunch more, look up the Instrument Flying Basics lesson on our website at wificfi.com. Lastly, before we jump into the cockpit, there are a couple key factors that we need to cover regarding these different maneuvers and we're going to explain which maneuvers we're going to be doing. So when we are in the airplane we are going to begin our flight in the practice area at a sufficient and safe cruising altitude. We will adjust our camera angle so that we are unable to see outside of the aircraft at all. We're only going to be able to see inside the cockpit and only be able to see our instruments and we will therefore be flying by instrument reference only. This would be to simulate the use of like foggles or an instrument hood if you were in an actual airplane. Here in the flight simulator we can just focus the camera only on our flight instruments. While we're in this condition and in this view, we will explain and demonstrate the following instrument maneuvers. We're going to do straight and level flight, constant airspeed climbs, constant rate climbs, constant airspeed descents, constant rate descents, turns to headings, and climbing and descending turns. So again, this is the very basics of flying without being able to look outside of the airplane. So without further ado, let's hop in the airplane and knock out these instrument maneuvers. All right, students, here we are at our airplane. Now you can see it's a nice, beautiful day today. So we should be able to see outside, but since we're doing our instrument flying basics lesson, we are not going to be looking outside the cockpit at all today. So say goodbye to these nice, beautiful, clear skies and let me introduce you to our view for this flight. Here we go. This is all we're gonna be looking at. So this is all that we're gonna be controlling our airplane with as we go through these different maneuvers. Uh, we'll start with straight and level flight, and then we'll do constant airspeed and rate climbs, constant airspeed and rate descents, turns and climbing and descending turns. Okay, so we've got all the instruments we need right here in front of us in our PFD, and then you can see I've actually adjusted the video so that on the right hand side we can see our engine gauges and our RPM, our tachometer on our MFD over there on the far right, okay? But on the left we've got our airspeed indicator in the middle, we have our attitude indicator, we've got our altimeter on the right, the little uh, smaller bar to the right of the altimeter is our vertical speed indicator, uh, we'll be focusing on that quite a bit today. And then down at the bottom, we have our heading indicator and our heading bugs. Cool. So it is a little bit turbulent today in the sim. As you can see, it's kind of bouncing around here a little bit. So that's how it would typically be in clouds as well. When you're flying through the clouds, I guess it kind of depends on what cloud type it is. But for the most part, it is a little bit bumpy. So this would kind of be true to life here for us. I'm going to go ahead and kick off the autopilot. And we're going to start with the straight and level flights. Let's go ahead and kick off the autopilot here. Every time I kick off the autopilot here on the sim, I do have to re-trim it. So we're just making small trim adjustments. Our power is already set. We're at cruise, and we are about 2,500 feet AGL. So to do straight and level flight, the uh, you're going to be bouncing around looking at all the different instruments, right? So you're going to be looking at your heading indicator, your altimeter, your vertical speed indicator. One thing you just don't want to do with any of these maneuvers is hone in on one too closely and or forget another one, okay? So you don't want to uh, completely ignore one of your instruments and you don't want to hone in on one of your instruments because that'll obviously cause you to forget the other ones. So straight and level flight is just this. It's just small adjustments up and down, small adjustments left and right using the trim, especially in the clouds we don't want to be making big pitch adjustments, big bank adjustments, everything 
is just nice and gentle. When I'm doing straight and level fly, I really like to focus on the vertical speed indicator and the heading indicator. Okay, the heading indicator obviously makes, uh, that's what we use to make sure that we're going straight on our heading. The vertical speed indicator, the reason I really like to look at that is because it's probably the most sensitive instrument on our panel. And so if we have this instrument under control, we can get that VSI, you know, it's, like I said, it's the most sensitive one, so it's gonna be bouncing up and down, but if we can keep it pretty well under control, then our altitude will be just fine. And making small adjustments to stay on our heading, it's just, it's, it's a pretty easy piece of cake. So I like watching that vertical speed, just trimming, making small power adjustments to kind of keep that vertical speed at zero, and then making small left and right adjustments to keep us on our heading. So 4,000 feet, and we're staying on our heading. If things start to get out of whack, if that VSI starts to climb too much, then we'll just go ahead and we'll pitch down just a little bit, and we'll adjust our power. But again, nothing crazy, okay? No large changes, and you don't want to be chasing your instruments too much either all right so that is our straight and level flight let's go ahead and give us a constant airspeed climb so let's say let's go ahead and adjust our altimeter here let's say we're going to climb up to uh, maybe let's go a little higher let's say we're going to climb up to 4,800 feet and we're just going to do a straight ahead for our constant airspeed climb we're going to set our climb power and then essentially we're just going to use our airspeed tape to adjust our pitch for whatever climb speed that we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and go full power for this climb. And I'm gonna say that I wanna climb at 85. So I'm just gonna make very small trim back. Uh, you can see that we're climbing on our altimeter and our vertical speed indicator. And you can see that our airspeed on our airspeed tape is decreasing. Now notice I didn't just yank the airplane back to get 85, okay? If you're in cruise, really you're gonna add your power and then gently begin to trim up and the airspeed will slow. You don't need to yank it back to 85. If you do anything too sharp while your instrument flying, you're gonna to start to lose control of the aircraft. And I might have even wanted to do a longer climb so that I could show you. We're gonna be getting to 4,800 feet by the time I get to this 85. Yeah, let's go ahead and keep climbing, what the heck. Let's go ahead and keep climbing up to 5,500 feet. Let's do that so we can show you kind of how to stabilize it at 85. So I'm still on my heading. Here's our 85 on our airspeed for kind of our cruise climb. And we've got a real stable, constant airspeed climb up to 5,500 feet. All right, I actually think we've probably demonstrated that enough. We're gonna continue our climb to 6,000, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna transition to a constant rate climb. In other words, I'm gonna try to trim the aircraft so that we're getting a 500 foot per minute climb on our VSI. I'm not gonna be worried about the airspeed so much anymore. I'm gonna be more worried about getting a constant rate about that 500 VSI climb. Now, the thing about constant rate climbs that you have to remember is while you may be looking at your constant rate climb and your vertical speed indicator, do not get too slow. You cannot completely ignore your airspeed indicator because if you get too slow, you will stall, right? So we're just gonna try to trim this out for about 500. Again, the vertical speed indicator is the most sensitive instrument in this plane, so it is gonna bounce around. And I'm glancing at my airspeed to make sure I'm not getting too slow you know close to that stall or anything like that but I'm mostly focused on making small pitch and trim adjustments and power adjustments for that 500 feet a minute once we start to get to our 6,000 feet on our altitude we'll go ahead and level out and get back to straight and level flight so I'm smoothly going to start to trim the nose of the aircraft down Nothing too fast, nothing too sharp. It's not like I'm throwing the nose of the airplane over. Very gentle. And then I'm gonna bring my power back to kind of a cruise setting. And we'll just retrim the aircraft to stay at 6,000. Cool, cool. Okay, 
Uh, before we do our descents, let's go ahead and do some turns first. So I'm going to turn back around and head back in the other direction after I get my airplane re-trimmed out here. I'm going to pop up my heading bug. Let's do a left-hand turn to heading to 70. So I'm going to get this up. Sorry, it kind of takes a heading bug a minute to get over there while we're in the simulator. Now this isn't really going to be that much different than making turns when you can't see outside the airplane. We're just going to go ahead and bank over. Nice little constant rate turn. Right. We're going to have to add a little bit of power probably, a little bit of trim to maintain our altitude while we make this turn over to 270 on our heading indicator. Not banking too sharp, so we're not losing control of the airplane. Okay, we're not doing like 45 degrees of bank here. We're doing like 20 to 30, so that we can keep that positive control of the aircraft. And then we'll go ahead. We'll start to roll out on our heading of 270, nice and gentle, until we're wings level. And we'll probably trim the nose of the airplane down just a touch to compensate for that increased lift. There's a nice little turn to the left. Let's do a... Actually, you know what? Let's go and do our descents now. And then we'll kind of do a descending turn as well. Okay, so the next one we're going to do a constant airspeed descent. Let's say that we want to descend at this 100 knots. And because we're basically at 100, and let's say that we're going to go down to 5,000 feet. So I'll bug my 5,000 feet. And I'm going to trim the nose of the airplane over. I'm going to reduce power just a little bit here. We're not going to do anything too crazy because we want to be right at about 100. Go straight ahead. If you're going a little too fast, then just kind of pitch or trim up. Okay, I'm going to bring my power back even just a little bit more and then we'll kind of retrim for that 100. Here we are, right about 100 knots. Nice, constant airspeed descent making small power, trim, yoke adjustments, watching our airspeed and our heading indicator, and we are descending pretty well. Cool. So here would be a nice constant airspeed descent for us. As we pass 5,500 feet, we're going to transition from a constant airspeed descent to a constant rate descent, and we're going to look for, let's say, 800 foot per minute descent on our vertical speed indicator. So there's 5500. I'm going to bring my power back even a little bit more here. And now I'm going to trim the aircraft to try and get about an 800 foot per minute descent on our vertical speed indicator. Remember everything's just small adjustments. Not as worried about my airspeed anymore. I'm more looking at my vertical speed indicator as we're transitioning into a constant rate descent. That vertical speed indicator is very touchy but you can see we're more focused on that keeping it bouncing kind of around that 800 especially in the turbulence it's a little tricky and then we'll go ahead and add some powers we're getting to our new altitude 5,000 feet for our level out bringing our power back up to a good little cruise setting retrimming the aircraft so we don't blow right past our altitude and we have leveled out. Okay, You can also do climbing turns and climbing descents. Uh, they're done in pretty much the same way. We'll go ahead and show you a climbing descent, or sorry, a descending turn here. A climbing descent. We'll show you a descending turn. We'll do a descending 180 degree turn. So let's go all the way around to the east. Give me just a minute for my heading bug to creep over there. So let's go ahead, uh, let's say, let's descend down to 4,000 feet again, and we're going to make a 180 degree turn as we do it. So we'll go ahead and bring this back, bring our power back, let's trim for about that 800 feet per minute or so like we were looking at before. So we're going to do a constant rate descending turn. So we're looking for about 800 feet per minute on our VSI, about a standard rate turn on our uh, turn indicator. And we're 
bringing it down to make a 180 degree turn while we are descending. If we do start to get too fast, we can bring a little bit of power back as well. If our airspeed starts to climb too high, but then we'll just have to retrain the aircraft to keep it about that 800 feet per minute. Just making small adjustments to our bank and our trim. Here, coming out on our heading. We're not quite to our altitude yet, but we are to our heading, so we're going to go ahead and bring the aircraft wings level on our heading of 090, get into our altitude, so we're going to start to add in, bring that nose up, and bring our power back in. For our cruise, and you can see as I'm adding that, increasing those RPM, it's just really gentle. I'm not slamming the yoke for the throttle forward or anything like that and now we're here at our altitude and our heading okay so that's it guys like I said these are the basics so we got straight level flight constant airspeed climb constant rate climb constant airspeed descents in uh, constant rate descents turns to headings and climbing and descending turns so that is how you do them for your instrument flying basics lesson again just remember not to focus too hard on any one instrument so that you're ignoring others and don't ignore any one instrument placing too much emphasis on the others you want to keep your eyes scanning between all these different things and if you want to see the different scanning techniques watch our knowledge video uh, for instrument flying basics on Wi-Fi CFI but in that guys that is it thank you for joining us on this quick little lesson here and we'll see you on the next one soon